Extra, extra. Let's read all about, hold up, hold up. Let's read all about it. This is our full moon party. So what is a full moon party with Born Without Boundaries? It's full moon predictions for each of the zodiac signs. All signs will be individualized and there will be timestamps after the video is done. <laughs> Just so you know, I can't put time steps there. Timestamps before the video is done, but these are um, predictions, messages that need to come through for each of the zodiac signs for the full moon in Scorpio. If you see me taking down anything, it's me taking down the timestamps. Um, anyway, let's get right into it. Hi, Sarah. Hi, I can't see your name. Kapil? Hi, hi. What's up, Jackie? Thanks for being on. So, hello, hello to everybody who's joining. I'm so grateful for your presence here. No, the full moon is not tonight. The full moon is going to be happening on, um, hold up. Where the, am I? You know I get confused, man. You know I do. You know I do. The full moon is happening on Thursday. I knew that. The full moon is happening on Thursday and it is a full moon in Scorpio. It will be actually full at 6.45 a.m. on Thursday. That's Eastern Standard Time. So understand that you can easily celebrate this on Wednesday. It's going to be very like close to full um, toward Wednesday night. So if you like to celebrate your full moon celebration, Wednesday night will probably be good. Uh, Thursday night is always good. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you can celebrate it. Those are the energies of the full moon next week. So full moon in Scorpio, bam, what does it mean? Good question. I shall read. Uh, the full moon in Scorpio resonates with the mysteries of sex, birth, death, and rebirth. On this full moon, we shine a light into the hidden recesses of our psyche. It is a time to shed old skins and let go of whatever is keeping us from growing. Understand what that means because the, the moon is in detriment when it is in Scorpio. So understand me, please, please, please understand me. When the moon is in detriment, it can be a very wishy-washy, um, uh, uncertain. You can feel very uncertain, emotionally not so stable. I'm not so talking about mentally stable, but emotion, almost like not being able to make up your emotional mind or see things very clearly, like needing some more direction. So understand this could be a very emotional moon for us, a very emotional time. Don't let that surprise you. Under the Scorpio full moon, we have the opportunity for profound personal transformation. This is also a good time to reflect on how we can reclaim our sense of personal power. This full moon is an especially potent time to work with goddesses associated with the sacred dark. It is also time for working all kinds of banishing, releasing, and cord cutting rituals. Scorpio helps us surrender to the process of transformation. Scorpio has a fierce compassion that tempers us, deepens us, and turns us into beings of wisdom. Uh, prayer for the Scorpio full moon. Inanna, walk beside me in my times of descent and help me see that they are the pathways to wholeness, healing, and hard-won wisdom. So the guiding goddesses are Inanna, the Morgan, Morgana, right? Uh, Kali and Caridwen. So understand that these are very, very, very powerful goddesses that are not afraid of the darkness. They are not afraid of the blackness. They are not afraid of um, the things that are uncomfortable in life. So uh, when you are tried emotionally or when you feel lost emotionally is when you are asked to screw your courage to the sticking place. You don't have to be courageous when nothing's wrong. You are brave when it is when you are scared. You have to be scared to be able to be brave. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's what has to happen. So this is almost like testing or being tried um, so that you can learn how to or see yourself and appreciate yourself for not backing down uh, at a time when you feel a little like uh, when you feel at least wonky and maybe even compromised. This is a sense of going into those dark resource, recesses of ourselves emotionally to really own our own shit. Now, what does that mean? So for me, it's not necessarily like, cause I, yes, am still planning on doing my love spell. I'll attach that above. Uh, what is it, 455? I'll attach that love spell above. Um, 
and I will, I am still uh, thinking, of, I'm going to be doing it and I'm going to be incorporating the ingredients that we made from our potpourri, our love potpourri. Um, yeah, I'm really excited and looking forward to it. Why? Because honestly, my, my emotional truth has been that I have been running away from love. I have been running away from connection and romantic connection. I've been running away from it because it scares me and it's failed so much in the past. Well, I got to get my fucking shit together and stop being a coward. I got to get going. I, I really have to start uh, looking for love because truthfully, deep down inside of myself, I'm not meant to be alone. I know that I'm not meant to be alone. I don't want to be alone and it makes me happy to be with somebody. So there you go. It's almost like getting down to the nitty gritty of your own it is to you. Third day, I would recommend selling the, celebrating the full moon uh, either Thursday during the day, right, at around 6.45 a.m. when the moon at its peak fullness, or um, I would recommend celebrating it on Wednesday night because the void, of course, happens um, when it's, it's moving into Sagittarius. It happens at 10.39 p.m. And anything done void, of course, is not going to stick. It's not going to take hold. It's almost like planting something in um, unstable soil. So don't do anything void, of course. So I would either recommend, if you're going to do a full moon ritual, do it on Wednesday uh, evening or Thursday morning. But don't do it on Thursday night because that's when the, the moon is. Well, no, no, you can do it at like 7.30, 8.30, sure. But once it hits that 10.30 point, the moon is going into to void, of course. So don't. I wouldn't do any full moon rituals on Thursday night after 9 o'clock. Because then you're getting into that void of course area and you don't want to do anything that won't stick or won't last. Um, that's my suggestion. I hope that you take it. Hold on briefly. You're going to experience a Michelle absence because I have to go plug in my charger or this is not going to go very well. Still here. Still with you. I actually hope, hope that worked. Yeah, it should be on. It should be on. Okay. So, yay! I'm back. Um, if anybody wants to take the timestamps down, that would be great. Uh, I've already uh, meditated on the cards and pre-shuffled the deck, and I really want to. I want to keep this under two hours. To be totally honest with you, some of these videos go up to three hours, and to me, that's just ridiculous. Nobody wants to be on for three fucking hours, you know. So, let's get into it. I'm gonna start with Scorpio. Here we go, um, Scorpio. Because it is your full moon, after all. Uh, it's time to take action. New moon in Aries. Now, Aries does know what it wants, and it has a very cardinal energy. And Scorpios, if you have gotten content or stayed or staying where you are, this is a time to do something about what matters to you. So you're not just going to talk about it, and you're not just going to stew on it. You're going to actually get to business. Now, you could also be dealing with an Aries, and that means that something has to be taken care of between you and that Aries, or between you and whoever is significant in your life, whoever maybe you've been battling with, or maybe whoever you've been avoiding battling with, a sense of so there's a decision that has to be made and something's got to give because there's a new cycle that has to begin. But if you don't initiate it, Scorpio, nothing's actually going to go anywhere. And then you are, you are limitless. You can do anything you choose, which is essentially spirit saying, go for it. This is... Um, this is uh, almost like they're being your cheerleader, Scorpio, to be totally honest with you, saying you got this, this is right, this is the right moment, you have everything that you need, the energy of four is here with you, which means angels are around you, protecting you, so you do not have to worry, there's nothing to fear, and, um, you know, it's almost like you're being, it's like, it's like you don't, you don't have a choice, you have to do this now, this is the time when something has to, a decision has to be made, 
and a movement has to be made. I don't know if you could be dealing with Aquarius as well, because this is Aquarius energy, but this is a truth being said, a truth being stated, and a truth coming out. This is also a sense of if you've just met somebody or are with somebody um, or that doesn't really know it, there's a sense of maybe even somebody coming into your life that you're going to have to plow through old ways and unstable ways plow through whatever you've settled for in order to get what it is that you want because you're about to be hit with something extremely special. Something or someone is coming into your life that is a unicorn. You thought you thought it didn't exist. You thought it couldn't happen. You thought it was just made up in fucking stories and here it is on your door like ready, ready to go and it's there for you it's here now which means it's either that what's going to get you to like sort of spur in you into action is the arrival of this special opportunity or special person or it's because that person has already arrived and you're like fuck i have to do something about this i gotta do it i gotta make a choice i can't stay where i've been this is the energy of seven, so this is supportive energy, somebody that's got your back, somebody that carries you, somebody that takes care of you, somebody that loves you, somebody that really lifts you up. Now, this could be spirit itself, once again, just coming in for the support, right? Right? Scarby is like, I'm going to help you out here. You're, in other words, you're going to get the help that you need to be able to make the decisions or take the action that you have to take. So when the time comes for you to do it, there's not going to be any sense of doubt. There's not going to be any worry or fear. You're going to know that you're protected. I know that fixed signs sometimes stay fixed too long in situations that aren't working for them or with situations that are mediocre and they can have so much better. So this is a reminder that you are worth so much more. You are, you deserve so much better and that better is out there for you. All it's got to take is for you to get that first step out of the door. And then last but not least, Sisterhood of the Rose, Beauty and Devotion, Priestess, Mystic, Teacher. This is the Where My Girl's At card. I wouldn't be surprised. But see, there's this energy of maybe obligations to others are what's holding you back. Obligations to others, obligations to what other people think. This is almost like, but I like him, but I like him, but I like him. Oh, he's so perfect. She's so perfect. She's so perfect. But do you think they're perfect? Or do you think that job is right for you? Do you love it? It's not about what everybody else says. It's not about what your tribe says. It's not about what your group says. It's not about what your family says. It's not about what works for fucking them, okay? It's about what works for you. And you're the one that's got to make a decision of your life. If you've been in a situation, Scorpio, where you've been settling because it works for everybody else, Guess what? That situation is not meant to last long and spirits like you got to do something and you got to do it now. I don't know who you're dealing with, but there's a sense of you got to step up and make this decision because it's almost like you've been making a decision that's right for everybody else and you've been ignoring what's right for yourself. Well, now it's time to make the decision that is actually right for you. Damn. All right. Let's move on from Scorpio. We're going to move on then to, does anybody know what time I started Scorpio? Um, we're going to move on to, Cap yeah, we'll move on to Capricorn. Um, let's move on to Capricorn. So that's 3, 13, 38. Let's move on. Capricorn, your decision. Uh, I'm going to say, did I, hi, hi guys. Hi, whoever just joined. Um, that message was for me and I just chimed in. Nice. Um, okay, Capricorn, Capricorn, Capricorn. Don't let pride get in your way. Full moon in Leo. So this is definitely a letting go and releasing period. And Capricorn, it's got to do with the worst parts of ourselves. Our Achilles heel, that sense of we know we're right. We know we're right. It's always worked for us before. But whatever has worked for you before is not working for you now. And it's that mindset that is telling you that you know the way and you know what to do and you know what's important. You don't, you don't, you don't, and you don't. Pride is going to impede you from releasing all of these thoughts that you need to let go and open yourself up for a new circumstance or a new situation. It's almost like humble yourself, be humble, admit that you don't know, admit that you're not aware, admit that you need guidance, admit, admit, admit that you're new in this situation or be willing to be new in this situation and allow a new circumstance to work for you. This is a sense of letting go that old sense of self so that you can be renewed and grow into your full self. 
coming in is treasured your loved ones. It is important to love others deeply. See, this is divine feminine energy, which means receiving. So guess what? And I know, Cappies, I talk to you guys about this a lot. This is a sense of being willing to receive, allowing somebody to provide, allow yourself to receive, whether it's sperm, gifts, money, whatever. You see the big old vagina in this card? Do you see that shape? That's what it is. Divine feminine. It's when we receive, we can take what we receive with open hearts, not with a checklist that says, okay, guess what? I have to pay you back. No, you receive it. What do you, like, do you pay somebody back? With, like, does the divine feminine give the divine masculine something back? No, she's built to receive. She's built to, to cup, to hold, to take. That's what she is. That's what the divine feminine does. She didn't give the sperm back. <laughs> she takes it and makes something wonderful out of it. And so whatever you're being given, uh, Capricorn, whatever your, whatever gifts you're being given, damn, a whole bunch of people just fucking dropped off. That pisses me off. Anyway, whatever gifts that you're, um, whatever gifts that you're receiving, please don't put them on checklists and figure how you're going to pay somebody back. That is pride. That is pride, not integrity. Instead, you take those gifts and you make them into something better. You make them into something wonderful. You, you work your magic. The magic that is Capricorn can make something out of nothing. And you take it and you build something with it. You use those resources that have been given to you. Instead of thinking, oh, I owe people, I owe people. Or I'm not going to take this from anybody because I have to provide everything for myself. No. Receive the resource and then work it and make it into something amazing. This is your chance to actually make, like get a breakthrough, right? Don't be your own Achilles heel. Don't be what trips yourself up by saying, oh no, 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 no. I've got to make my own resources. No, you've got to learn to receive resources and then turn them into something amazing. <clears throat> And then we have taking care of, taking care of yourself, taking care of your family, a very nurturing energy. This is also divine feminine energy because this is fourth house energy, Cancerian energy. This is rocking back and forth, lo loving, learning how to love, learning how to nurture, look at learning how to care for, like receiving the good. What did I say? What did I say? It's like taking the sperm and making the baby. You don't give the sperm back. You give it back something, what you put out after you've taken that sperm into your body is something much more beautiful. So you've taken a resource and you've turned it into something phenomenal. So this is a sense of home and hearth. You could be working in your home. You could be working in your house. You could be building your own home or, or you're just nurturing something. You're taking a hold of something and you're like, you're, you're making it into something better than it was. And in doing so, you're making your life better than it was. And then trust the niggle. What is that niggling feeling, um, that needling feeling uh, uh, trying to tell you? It's almost like, um, it's almost like I would say this, it's almost like whatever is bugging you, whatever is bothering you is probably that pride. It's probably that pride that's saying, you know what, or it could be the breakthrough. It could be spirit's voice coming to you and saying, uh, you got to let this go. You got to let this happen to you. You got to allow yourself to receive the gift that is being given to you. You've prayed to me long enough for it. You have asked me long enough, like, for, I want somebody's support. Why can't somebody support me? Why can't somebody help me? Because you always push everybody's help away. Because every fucking time you push uh, somebody's help away, it is you pushing spirit away and saying, I don't want to receive. I don't want to have every, anything. This is that feeling inside of you that's, that's, that's irritating. Okay, you got to face it. Why is it here? Why is it bothering me? Why is it bugging me? If it's because of my own pride, that's my enemy. That's what I have to let go. There's also a sense of a message coming through, maybe from a maternal message, maybe from your mother, maybe from, I don't know, somebody that you love, this sense of, of um, almost like somebody intervening and trying to make sure that you make the right choice and not make, you know, make sure that you make the right choice. Um, so you can expect that, especially with the moon in Scorpio, you could get some messages from the other world too. Um, all right, let's go on. We will move on now to Sagittarius. Ah, uh, here we go at 1947. Sagittarius, let me take a drink of water. I'm sorry, guys. Um, 
Sagittarius, show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius. This is a truth coming out, and this is your truth coming out. This is your reality and everything that you are. But this is also a sense of feeling good about who you are um, and not having to hide it. There's also a sense of being a little bit awkward and a little bit off, like maybe even not off, but having some sort of very unique and original ideas. I would not be surprised if you get spurred to be very creative around this time or um, have a sense of almost if you've been feeling stifled or feeling your creativity stifled, Sagittarius, um, there is a sense of um, there is a sense of all of a sudden that, that coming back full steam. Hold on, show the world the real you. Mm. I almost feel like you're going to be dropping some major truth bombs onto people. I've seriously like it's almost like you've held something in for too long. You've been you've been seeing something, but you haven't been saying something. And so it's almost like that truth is about to be spilled out because that's really hard for you to not be able to just spill that truth out. So for some reason, you've been holding it back and holding it inside, maybe not telling people somebody what you really feel about them or not telling somebody what you really think, uh, holding your tongue for all the right reasons, but it's always the wrong decision. So this is when your truth gets spilled out. You're not going to be able to hold your tongue anymore. So what you're releasing is your truth over this full moon. Uh, then we have speak, action, speak loudly, express your love through actions. Wow. So then, there it is. It's like showing, not just saying, but showing what it is you really feel inside. It could be actually, um, usually this is distance traveling, but I don't know if anybody's traveling anywhere now, but there is a sense of um, demonstrating and showing what it is you really feel. Uh, I honestly don't, don't think that this just has to do with romance. I think this has to do with you could anything. A sense of taking action to show what you mean. Almost like you're having an idea, but everybody's against you or they're not listening and you just walk in there and instead of just saying something, you show people what you mean. You show people the way it has to be done. You show them and you tell them through showing them and that's what makes the impression on them. But this is something that you've been holding back for a while because it's almost like somebody's been oppressing you or shutting you up or pushing you down or not listening to you. But there is a sense of no, I'm just going to take the bull by the horns and I'm going to I'm going to say even if they don't want to hear it, I'm going to say it because it doesn't matter if they don't want to hear it. I'm going to show them that I'm right. And this is you taking action to show, to prove, to show that what you were thinking all along was actually what was true, dropping some major truth bombs on somebody or a group of people. Um, and this is two plus five, the energy of seven. Um, somebody has gotten themselves tied up in some serious shit. There is a sense of that you know they need help. Um, I don't think it's you. It may be you that need help, needs help, but because of that action card, I think it's more you going in there and telling people how to straighten out their own shit. Um, there is a sense of somebody sort of bogging themselves down and now like having to take responsibility for their own actions. They got themselves all caught up. They may be caught up in a past relationship. They may be a past, They just may, may be making mistakes, like not know how to do something correctly. And you have to go in there and show them. And you've been taking a back seat and holding back and trying to like not lay the truth bomb on them, but they need it. Look at this. This is a sense of calling somebody out on their bullshit. And then last but not least, Sagittarius, don't dim to fit in. Wham! What a perfect card that is. Don't dim to fit in, Sagittarius. You've been holding parts of yourself back so that you can have the job, keep the job, stay in the relationship. Whatever it is, it's got to stop. You've got to stand up to this person that you know is freaking wrong, and you've got to stop holding your tongue in order to, to keep the peace. Because the peace is based on lies, and it's based on a bunch of BS, so you've got to be the one that speaks up and says something by doing, showing. Like, you see, you keep telling me that this isn't the right way to do it, but I'm proving to you that it is. I'm doing it right in front of you right now and see how everything is working out much better. That kind of energy, Sag, is what you're up against, what you're facing, and almost, I want to say, what's going to be expected of you around this, with this full moon energy. Mm. All right, so there we go to Aquarius. Uh, Aquarius. <clears throat> How's everybody doing out there? How's everybody doing? 
Ooh. Mm. I know my throat. It's because I talk too loud. Uh, bring love into the situation. This is a new moon in Aquarius. Oh, I don't. Okay, hold up. Hold up, Aquarius. What did I say? You could be dealing with a Sagittarius because they got your other half. They got your other card. They got the completion to your energy. So I don't know if you're dealing with an Aquarius. Uh, I don't know if you're dealing with a Sagittarius Aquarius, but this is definitely, ooh, you getting a new start. A new start, a new love, a new love, a new love. Like what else can I say? This is maybe new love opportunity. Um, maybe this is somebody who's a, just, just, I don't even, I'm trying to pick up on the vibe. Just give me a second, because sometimes Aquarius energy is difficult for me to pick up on. But there is a sense of almost intrepidation, like not really knowing if you want to let this into your life or not being certain. Um, also a sense of maybe you haven't shown somebody what you, what you really feel. And uh, there's a sense of, well, you're about to find out that they really feel it for you. And when they show it to you, Aquarius, what are you going to do? Lie? You're going to be like, you're going to pre... I mean, I know you guys are capable of it, but that would not be the way that I would recommend. Like, if this is almost like you're going to receive this opportunity for love. You're going to receive this opportunity for romance. Um... Okay, you're gonna, you're gonna, I can't, I can't read that right now. Um, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna receive this opportunity for love, um, but it's almost like, um, hmm. Bring love into the situation. New moon in Aquarius. Bring love into the situation. Oh, I'm telling you right now, it's almost gonna be you. It's almost gonna be you that has to at least allow the love to come in. Um, or you're the one that's going to have to make the first move because I bet you you've kept it under such tight, like tightly wrapped up that you like they don't even know that you have feelings for them. And there is a sense of hopefully that like there is a sense of you know that they have feelings for you, but you have hidden your heart so effectively. They're not sure that you want them to Aquarius. Well, you're the one that's got to take the next step. You're the one that's got to show. You're the one. This is also just saying that if there has been a friendship that has been going on, if there has been something that's been building between you and the other person, then around the Scorpio moon, the sex is going to be on point. It's probably going to be your sexual chemistry that's going to push you over out of that friend zone and into the end zone, baby. Oh, I heard it. Yes, I did. Now, this is express love through gifts. So definitely somebody is going to be showing you that they care. Somebody is going to be showing their affection for you. In, in like very few cases, this could also mean finally getting that engagement ring you've been waiting for. But somebody is going to do something physical, physical and probably through gifts that is going to demonstrate to you that they think of you as more than just a friend. So it is going to be tangible and it is going to be obvious. In other words, Aquarius, it's going to be enough to make you feel secure enough to be able to show them like 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 break open that little crack in the door to show them that you think they're special too, please. Uh, oh, this is somebody who needs touch and affection. What did I say? This is somebody who learns through play. I bet you you have a very playful relationship with this person. They could be a Sagittarius. They could be a Pisces. Definitely mutable energy. There is a sense of somebody who likes to go with the flow, likes to be playful, likes to have fun. But they are somebody who learns hands-on. So play is very important for them. And I don't mean they're a player. I mean tactile contact. Like physical touch definitely a sense of spending sharing special time with somebody um, to secure their feelings and let them know that their feelings are secure with you um, this is a very open energy very understanding energy very peaceful energy and very loving energy that really does want to show affection openly uh, and last but not least no wait postpone pause say no <laughs> I'll tell you this right now. This is your energy. This is your energy that's getting in the way. It's, it's not spirit. It's almost like you saying spirit is no. This is you saying no. This is you with the dark cloud, you with the electric bolts, you with the no. I'm shutting this all down right now. It's no. No to no. I'm going to say that right now, Aquarius. No 
to know you cannot say no to the circumstance, you cannot say no to the situation, it's almost like these storm clouds are in your heart and in your mind. These storm clouds are your anxiety and your worry. They're your worst case scenario constantly playing out in your friggin' mind. It is not a no, it is say no to no. Please, you have got to work through this. This is showing you what the fear is going to be. It's gonna fear like it's all, not like it's all wrong, because you know it's all right. Something with this person is all right, but there is a sense of you shutting it the down before it even has a chance to be something because you're scared, because you're worried, and because your anxiety is getting the best of you. Don't do it. This could also be a sense of a stormy, rainy night that is going to block the two of you in together and there's going to be some love making going on. Some thunderstorm love going on. Electricity, baby. Electricity. It's not a no. It says wait, postpone, pause, say no. That's your energy. That's you wanting to push everything off for what? In other words, You've already been pushing. This has been your energy with them so far. Up until now, that's all you've been doing is no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. What are you trying to avoid? It's about to break through. Just an FYI, so you know. All right, now we go to Pisces. 31, 30. All right, Pisces. Let's see what this full moon has in store for you. I tell you, it has not disappointed so far. Pisces. Uh, hold your hold your vision, fixed vision. So Pisces, whatever you've been doing so far is what you have to keep doing. There is a sense of um, maybe maybe a little bit of fear, maybe a little bit of disappointment, but you have to keep going. Um, whatever you've been working on or putting your heart and soul into, continue to put your heart and soul into it. Stop paying attention to other people's reactions. Stop paying attention to other people's criticisms or feedback. In fact, stop paying attention to everybody else at all, which I know is very difficult for you. You have got to stay true and hold on to what you believe and what you know inside your heart. You have got to keep up. There's going to be something that really tests you. It really is. It's almost like it's going to make you feel like you should give up and retreat and um and 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 go away like le like like uh, retreat 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 no stay clear stay on the path i know the light may be dimming but is it dimming or is it just sort of like i don't know is this a no this is a waning moon it's going to get better in other words that's 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 ultimately the message here pisces is that it's going to get better and i know you've probably waited a long time to get here which is why it feels like you shouldn't have to wait any longer, but we don't get to choose. We don't get to choose. So all we can do is just stay the course. And in staying the course, we actually do choose because we're choosing where the current is taking us. We're choosing to create a current that leads us in the direction that we want to go. So it is actually all about you and the current you create right now. So stay your course. If you've devoted yourself to something, a cause, a project, a person, stay that course. Keep going because effectually you're creating the current that's going to change your circumstance. <clears throat> Love who you are. This is the time for you. This is the time for you to set sail, travel, take off, and allow yourself to be supported and pushed forward. This is almost like somebody's going to make um, a move or, or give you an opportunity that's going to help project you forward or push you forward. Believe in yourself, accept the offer, believe in your ability to handle the situation that you're in because, and I've been getting this message for you similarly in other readings, it is your time, Pisces. It is your time. It's your time to take off. It's your time to soar. Get away from land. You can't be safe anymore. This is your waters. You can sail these waters. You can navigate them. You are prepared for them. And something is about to take off. But believe in yourself. Sorry. Believe in yourself. That's the caveat of that self-doubt might start to creep in. You just have to keep moving. There's some sort of bullshit here, almost like feeling like you deserve to suffer from past mistakes, or there is there is a sense of being around somebody, of feeling like you've goofed, feeling like you've made so many mistakes that you don't deserve anything nice anymore. And yes, you know what? You have to pay the consequences for your mistakes. 
Um, there's a sense of maybe you wanting to travel and escape something, um, like coming upon a situation that you really want to avoid. You can't avoid it. This is something that you have to pay the piper for. Either pay the piper or own up to or accept about yourself. But you can't run from this fearful, frightful thing. And it's got to do with something that directly has to do with a mistake that you made. You can't turn and run from it. You have to actually face it. Actually facing it is going to be the right decision for you, your personal strength, and your personal and professional growth. This is a sense of whatever has been bothering you, even if it isn't consequences from the outside, whatever has been nagging at you or making you hurt or upset, I mean, it's going to catch up to you. I'll tell you that right now. And you're going to have to confront it because you can't escape it. So confronting it is really your only way through it. And then leap. You go first, the, uh, the universe will catch you. And there's your full moon too. So yeah, there is a sense of you, A, wanting to just escape and get the fuck, get the fuck away from this shit. Um, but also B, leap into, like leap at it, leap forward. Don't retreat and double back around and hide Pisces. You can't do that. You have to know that going forward is your only option. Uh, take this leap of faith. If all you have is faith, then go on faith. But the universe is going to, it's going to be okay. In other words, even though it feels right now like it's not going to be okay, like everybody's ripping at you and tearing at you and making you suffer for things that you've done in the past, keep moving forward, Pisces, because you're about to leave that all behind. Ooh. Oh my God. Aries. All right, let's do this. <clears throat> Taking a little sip of water for you guys. Hold on. Ooh. Aries. Let's see what's up. Communication is key. New moon in Gemini. This is person to person communication. This is almost a sense of <clears throat> you having to talk to somebody that is close to your heart, near and dear to you, matters to you, or that you have to stick up for yourself to, to confront. But you definitely have to confront somebody or somebody is going to be calling you. But there is going to be like you're going to be receiving communication from somebody. There's going to be somebody that uh, there's going to be a conversation that is going to be had. And it's going to be a one on one conversation. This is probably something that's been building up for a while. Maybe something that was put on hold for a while. But you're finally going to be getting receiving the communications that you need. I don't know if it's about your government check. I don't know if it's about your boyfriend. I don't know what it is. But whatever communications pop, popped into your mind, as soon as you heard it, those are the ones. They're finally going to be coming in. You're finally going to be like making progress or at least getting some communication that helps you to understand what the f is up. You know what I'm saying? A direction forward or be able to communicate with somebody um, or get communication from somebody that, that can actually help you understand what the f is going on. Or like I said, this could be also a personal situation where um, you actually get to sit down and talk to somebody or you hear from somebody that you haven't heard from in a long time. Um, and be, why? Why? Because they're, you're hearing from them because there's, a, there's something that you have to release. There's a cycle between the two of you that you have to complete. You have to confront something that has been, um, that has been sort of like laying in wait. Um, you have to confront it. Absolutely. Uh, look to your inner strength. You are stronger than you realize. This is awakening. Okay. Um, 100%, the first thing I thought was this is co communications coming in through the internet. I don't know if it's email, but I'm almost thinking social media because this is looking at somebody, watching somebody, um, um, maybe even spying on somebody. Somebody could have been getting information about you or somebody, you could have been getting information about somebody else or some sort of electronic communications coming through, somebody that's been at a distance from you, sort of like a prodigal son in your life areas. There's a sense of um, this communication coming in and really surprising you. And at first you almost don't know what to say or don't know what to do, or you don't know how to react, but simultaneously you have to pick up the other phone. You have to pick up the other line. You have to, you have to talk. This is also a sense of just seeing and finding and realizing, awakening to the truth of something, um, being able to accept it at this point. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's almost like acceptance, having the strength now in yourself to be able to accept what you see, awakening to the truth of somebody. And I think it's through these communications that are coming in. Um, 19 turns into, okay, so this is get ready for the big shebang. Get ready for something that you've been preparing for for a while. This is stepping out in style. This is also something that like, what have you been preparing for is what it's asking you. Um, finally being able to move forward and on to the next step. This is also, I think, a wedding card. So I don't know if you guys are, are getting married or moving forward with that, but there's been something that you've been planning for quite some time that you're, or working on for quite some time, Aries, that you're finally being able to move on. Like you're, you're, you're able to move forward, um, Aries. Finally, finally able to move forward. You're getting the communications that you need to be able to go to the next step. There will be cause for celebration. You could be going to a wedding, you could be celebrating, you could be getting invited to a celebration. Really interesting, I don't know what's up there, but there is definitely something for you to celebrate about. And then last but not least, you've been training, for, what did I say? Oh, this is my favorite card too, Aries. The age of light. You've been training for this for lifetimes. You're prepared for this. In other words, whatever you've been working on, it's you've been working on it for a long time. Um, receive this uh, opportunity and communication with grace and with acceptance and with happiness because this has been a circumstance that, that's, that's been building in your life for a while. Uh, whatever kind of, like, yeah, it's just been building for a while and you need the answers, but what's more, you need the conclusions. You need to, and, and you will, you'll be finally celebrating. You'll have a reason to celebrate. Finally, you're making a breakthrough that you really needed to make. I don't know if that's breaking up with somebody or somebody finally asking for your hand in marriage. I don't know if it's finally getting a call from your boss saying, hey, we want you back at work. Or if it's finally making that breakthrough, like all those emails you've been sending out to somebody, you're finally getting a response. Whatever it is, you have been working on this for quite some time. You've been preparing for this and now you're ready. It's here. The moment is right now. Woo! That's some good shit right there. Aries, let's move on to Taurus. <clears throat> Taurus at 42.16. Let's do this. Actually, let me take another drink of water. My voice gets so hoarse. Uh, Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Okay, a win-win outcome is forecast. So you've been in, like, you've been struggling with something. You've been, like, you know, maybe sparring or it's been difficult to find a balance. Um, but now this is almost like equal partnership coming in. So something, yeah, yeah. So this is Libra energy, also ruled by Venus. Usually Libra energy is love and partnership. So there has been some sort of conflict in a partnership in your life. I'm not going to full on say that it's romance, but with that Libra energy, it does tend to be romance. But let's just call it partnership for now. There has been an unbalance, a destabilization. Something wasn't working out or you were giving too much or you weren't as interested or there was an an imbalance between the two of you. And now that balance is finally being able to be restored. And I think it was just sort of like the cosmic energy that had to be like pushed out. Something had to get out of your way. There's a sense of a rebalancing in your life, being able to, um, yeah, something in your life is balancing out now, finally. Uh, you're finally able to make peace with it. You're finally able to feel good about it. You're finally able to make a resolution or find a resolution with it. Really interesting energy because it could be so many things. Though I say, like I said, Libra does tend to be a win-win outcome is forecast. It's almost like you found a way to compromise with somebody that you wanted them to win. It's almost like you you wanted, you didn't, you didn't want there to be, um, you didn't want there to be bad feelings. You didn't want there, this wasn't a situation where you wanted somebody to lose. It's like you were look, working and searching really hard so that you could find a way to make this work for everybody. And finally, it has. You're, you're, you're getting good news. Forgiveness. Nothing is gained by holding on to past disappointments. And this is two plus nine, that energy is 11. So awakening. Awakening to what's important, awakening to what you have to let go in order to let the future happen. 
um, there is a sense of finally being able to maybe let go of a partnership or let go of something that was unfair to expect from somebody um, or let go of uh, release, forgive, let go of. Let me think hard. Nothing is gained by holding on to past disappointments. Yeah, this is, it's almost like you were... It's almost like you were expecting a resolution a long time ago. This is something that um, could have been coming from the past, uh, or or it's it, at least it's been around a long time and maybe looping itself over and over. This is finally being released from that and being able to let it go. And perhaps that was just about you know learning to forgive, learning learning to like kind of um, not be angry at somebody anymore. Um, two plus three is five. So this is a guy that collects. He's a collector. This is somebody who sets his eyes on something that he wants and he kind of doesn't give up till he gets it. So be careful what you wish for. This is a sense of, okay, so uh, what do you wish for? Somebody who likes a lot of opulence, likes to collect things. And it's almost like you may have set something, somebody may have set their sights on you and have tried to collect you, Taurus, or somebody may have, um, oh, let's see, or you may have been trying to do this, but something that you have set your sights on and had wanted for a while is now, um, it's almost like you've let it go. You've been able to let it go. And in a way, you let it go, you actually got Sorry. Sorry, guys. It's actually in, in you letting it go that's actually helped to um, get you what you want. But there's a sense of like having held on to something too long. Like, ugh, what is it? Get grounded. Empaths, highly sensitive, connect with nature. Hold up, Taurus. This is a little confusing. I mean, get grounded is you uh, reconnecting to the earth. This is you feeling solid ground under your feet again. Oh, I understand. So this is something that you wanted really, really badly. It's something that you have desired for a long time. And in finally getting it, in finally getting the situation resolved, you have... In finally getting it, in finally getting this situation resolved, there has been a peace that's been restored to your life. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I feel like you needed to talk to somebody or there was some sort, because this is partnership, right? There was some sort of resolution that needed to happen. There, there was some sort of discussion and you've wanted it for a while, but nobody would, or you didn't get the opportunity. It's like almost like you, you didn't get an opportunity to say what you needed to say or something like that. But th there was a sense of finally being able to let it go and, and being able to, like in, in letting it go, get that peace, get what you've wanted, which is that forgiveness, which is that peace, which is the conversation that you needed or the opportunity you knew you deserved. And that is actually what helps to make you feel so much more stable. Okay. It's still a little ambiguous, but I'm going to leave it there. Um, Taurus, and then we have Gemini. Gemini. Okay, Gemini. Let's see. Oh, hello. <laughs> a fiery climax approaches. This is like major penis energy. So this is Aries, um, the energy of Aries, the energy of progress, the cardinal of all cardinal, the atom bomb of the cardinal. Uh, this is explosive and because Aries is ruled by Mars, it's very masculine sexual energy. Anytime I get this card, Gemini, there is a huge orgasm in store. So. I don't know what's been going on with y'all, but there is a sense of this being a real good week for you. <laughs> uh, maybe, um, anyway, let's, let's turn this around and give some other options, right? A fiery climax approaches. You're finally able to confront something or, or yeah, you're finally able to confront something and break through something that you've always wanted to break through. Now, you could take that as sexual as you want it, and it definitely could be, but that is what the general energy is of finally being able to um, reach your apex of finally being able to release yourself of finally being able to, uh, 
let go and explode all over in whatever way. It's like breaking through, like punching through. You hear what I'm saying? It's, it's that energy of just like, that's all I can say. I don't really have the words to describe it, but you know what I mean. <clears throat> this is definitely about fucking because this is the two of you getting together, a union of hearts. Ooh, you are going to be making love on Thursday, especially with that sexual Scorpio energy in the air. You want to be fucking for three days straight. Gemini, this is, this has actually been a long time coming. This is like my two of cups card. Somebody, it's like you're finally consummating a relationship. Somebody that you've been around, been around, like been hanging out with, or somebody that it's almost like you've been waiting for this person for a long time, maybe even in your life. But this person is somebody who they had to mature and you had to mature before you could get together. But it's like you have been meant for each other and been growing together for a long time. They could be an Aries. This is somebody who has finally like given themselves over to you. You're finally able to connect. You're finally able to be physical. You're finally able to touch. This is definitely, uh, yeah. Um, get ready. What I say, be prepared. Show up, turn out, put on your nicey nices. Wherever you go this week, Gemini, make sure you look good. Make sure you are perfumed. Make sure your, your underarms are shaved and your legs ain't hairy. This is, I know we've been all in quarantine. Queens of quarantine with the braids growing from their underarms. I know, get yourself ready. Get, Gemini, get yourself ready. This is better be prepared. You got to show up and get your proper on. This is you have got to put your best self forward. Why? Because you got to get some. That's why. You don't want to get all hot and heavy with somebody and it's like you haven't brushed your teeth in four days. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just energy. I'm just saying that is definitely this energy. And I'm not even messing around with it. It just came out as blatant as it could. This is definitely showing up in your best attire. Shave those armpits, shower like all week because you're about to get, something's about to go down. Something is about to go down. At the very least, even if this isn't sexual, this is an opportunity that you've been waiting for for a long time. So be sure that you're prepared to put your best self forward. Uh, keepers of the earth, you are not alone. Ancestors stand beside. Okay, so this is definitely you've been getting support. You've been getting help. People believe in you. People who are higher up than you believe in you. Um, they're all like, yes, this is a good decision. This is a good decision. You've been guided to this point in your life. You feel a connection. And in fact, if this is a sexual connection, it's almost like your spirits have your spirit guides, your ancestors have guided you to this person, or you almost think they remind you of somebody that's very important in your life. They remind you of somebody like somebody that has passed, but that you miss a great deal. So it's almost like they're coming back in the, a new form in this new person, but they're you're able to connect with them that you the way that you did with this other person. It's like reincarnation kind of thing. It's like the time had to be prepared. Um, yeah, the the the, the time not the time had to be prepared. Um, the right time had to be reached. And the two of you, like I said, the union of hearts, you had to be prepared for each other or you had to be prepared for this moment and this opportunity because there's a person, even if it's a freaking job, there is an energy of somebody that is about to offer you something that you've wanted for a very long time and you got to hit it. Like you got to like take this opportunity. You got to hit it. I'm telling you, and it's divinely guided too. It's, it was meant to be for a while. Ooh, you, ooh, I'm telling you, this has been building for some time. You could feel it. You could feel the tension. And yes, I can almost smell the sex in the air. Like that is especially what I'm feeling for you guys. But you could also interpret the sexual energy as just that push forward. That's getting you through to something that um, you've been wanting this opportunity for a while. Anyway, you best have a good week. Uh, cancer. Let's see what we got. 54, 12. What? Cancer. What? Okay. Hold up. Uh, cancer. 
I love you. Okay, this is good. Uh, a new start is coming. And this is just new moon energy. And I know that we're approaching a full moon, Cancer. I know. But a new, let, us, let me put it, I'm going to say this to you right out, straight out, because you heard the description of the Scorpio full moon, and you know that our planetary, ruling planetary body, our the moon, is in deficit, yeah, in, um, in Scorpio. You're about to be tested in a very harsh freaking way, but this is the end of it. This is the tail end. Cancer, this is the tail end. This is the end. It's the stop. It's the no more bullshit is happening after this. This is the ultimate cleansing. All the darkness that was hidden, like the bottom of the toilet bowl, all of that is about to get right washed away. And so it may be difficult for you and you may feel like your life is ending. No, no, no. It's just beginning. It's about to be shinier and more beautiful than it's been in a long time. Why? Because finally all that crud that gets gunked up in Scorpio, in the underworld, it's coming up and you, I'm serious, I'm just going to say, life might get real shitty over this full moon, but it's going to, it is going to be smelling like roses, like the day later, the day later, because this is a new start for you. If things get really emotional and really hairy, it's because all of those things had to come out. They had the energies had to be released. It had to be let go of. And this is your new beginning. It's coming. I'm telling you right now, I can't express it. I've been getting this in reading after reading for us. I'm saying it to you over and over again. Finally, we are released. Finally, we are able to let go of. Finally, we are free. And all the shit is coming to the surface so that it can be washed away. Uh, you better stop. You better stop. Speak the language of love. Loving words have a, okay. This is essentially, see that? Three plus five equals eight. Destiny, it's finding our twin. It's finding our twin, it's finding our significant other, it's finding our soulmate, it's finding where we're supposed to be in life, and somebody who speaks the language of, speaks our language, the person that we've been looking for in our life to make us complete, because you know we feel that way. Okay, let me go back. This is also Gemini. Yes, we have a full moon in Scorpio on the, what is it, the 8th? The 7th. But two days before then, the North Node shifts into... Gemini. So that means that we do not have to lead the way anymore. And you know we're always hard on ourselves and take too much responsibility and take too much shit onto ourselves. We are not the North Node anymore. And that is going to relieve us. Yes, it is going to drum up a lot of shit for us, but it's also going to relieve us of all that tension and all that pressure. There is a, there is a whole new beginning here. A whole, a whole new way of living, a whole new life that is much lighter um, um, yeah, much lighter. So we're not so bogged down and so heavy. And this is definitely a new start is coming. Watch. So the more significant time for us is going to be May 5th. Not the actual full moon itself, but May 5th. Watch. Because that's when our new period, our new time is going to start. And right when our new start happens, what's going to happen? That full moon is going to bring up all that shit. Why? To clean out your pipes and really give you that clean new start, that clean new start that we have been um, waiting for. I'm telling you, if you're dealing with a Gemini, you're probably going to hear from them. Um, but I think that this is, it's not even, yeah, this could be, this is just, this is a sense of, of uh, yeah, Gemini sort of liberating us and freeing us. Okay, okay, um, this is hell. This is destruction. This is sadness. This is fear. This is suffering. All that suffering, all that. All, it could very well be that you almost like, um, hold on. I want to I get this card really quickly. Answer the call. What is your soul calling you to do? It's almost like it's going to get worse before it gets better. This is you walking to hell, through hell to get to heaven. And it's about to end. Answer the call. What is your soul calling you to do? The wait is over. Whatever that struggle, whatever that punishment, whatever that persecution has been, the wait is over. You're about to get the call. 
Yeah. You're, you're, you're about to like see the way through, see the way out, maybe see the light for the first time in a long time. There's been a lot of suffering going on. And it's almost like maybe you may be called to help people and answering that call to help people is what's going to actually start shifting your gears forward or like like changing your life. If you get a call to like help somebody or like we always answer the call, right? But this is almost like, a sense of like almost like Mother Teresa shit. I, I, I'm going to say like, like phil philanthropy or something. Oh, hold on. No, this is, this could be literally a call, a call, an actual call. Noticing that somebody that you're with is going through hell or I'm telling you right now, whatever, whatever the bad news that you get, there is a sense of it liberating you of finally allowing you to be free of a lot of shit that has been coming at you. This is a warning, a great deal of suffering. Okay. Okay. Um, the reason for your suffering is because you haven't been living, it's because you haven't been true to yourself. And at this point, it's gonna be sink or swim. There's a sense of you not wanting to spend any more time in hell and you making a decision to make the right decisions and answer to your true self. That's what it is. I honestly think this is a whole new start this is just rising from the ashes, Cat Cancer. This is you rising from the ashes. And the worst of it is going to be over by the end of this week. Like, worst of it all. This is a transformative period for us. Um, where is it? Where am I? Leo. I want to pull another card for Cancer, but I don't know what card I want to pull. Because I want this hell card. I want this struggle and hardship to find this card for me please to find this card for me okay what did i say you stood your ground okay i'm gonna show it all to you i'm gonna show it all to you you're gonna get new opportunities maybe even noticed you're gonna get noticed a new offer yeah let me let me let me show you all the cards the clarifiers um, so essentially, yes, this is your future. Your future is here, right? And your world is changing for the better. Finally able to, um, yeah, in other words, your world is changing. You stood your ground. This is you taking the moral high ground, somebody noticing you, somebody realizing that you're valuable, uh, somebody making you an offer that is going to basically help you get out of your struggle, right? So in other words, this is the end to your hell. You've made it through your hell. I wanted to be specific about that. Sorry about that. Let me get Leo on here now. Okay, Leo. Ooh, I had to just make sure, okay? Leo, don't let your past hold you back, south node. So this is it, okay, don't let your past hold you back. Um, so, this can mean so many things. It's very ambiguous. Anytime I get this card, Leo, it's always go check your north, your, your north and south nodes. Where are your north and south nodes located? Because this is your Achilles heel and this is where you fall short or always fall back into those easy things. That, you know, you always fall back into those easy patterns that you always fall back into. Or this is a sense of somebody from your past coming back or something from your past coming back and threatening the beautiful future that you have in front of you. What is your pitfall? What is the temptation? What is the what is the, the fear? What is what is it? Because whatever it is, Leo, it's gonna be front and center on this full moon. And just like Scorpio tests you like, but that's that plutonic energy. It it tests you that way. It tests you in a cruel way, in a way that it knows that you're weak, right? There's a sense of oh, I gotta see what's coming back. Let me let me shut my mouth and let me see. Have faith, trust your faith in the situation. One plus three, three. Okay, I get it. Don't let your past hold you back. 
there's just this big pull backward. There's a sense of maybe even wanting to fall back into something. Oh, that was it. You're going to want to fall back into something that's easy. You're going to want to fall back into something that's familiar. I don't know if it's a love interest. I don't know if it's a job, but you're going to be very, very tempted and a little bit compromised over this full moon to fall into something that is easy for you. The only way that you're going to be able to combat this, Leo, is to just have faith that things are going to get better and don't fall in. That faith is going to be your balloon ride over that chasm that is the pit that will suck you in if you let it. So you have just got to have faith. I know it may look uh, glum right now. I know it, the future may seem bleak. It's not. You have got, this is somebody believing in the future. This is somebody believing in what is coming on the other side. So there's always a dawn after the dark, right? So this is a sense of you're going to be tempted by the dark, Leo, to fall back and to, to go back to something that was not good for you, was too easy, never helped you move forward. And yet it's a secure certain place and it's, it's, it, if it's a scary moment in your life, there's a sense of falling back into that pit. Don't fall back into those bad habits. Don't fall back into those like comfortable places. This is you believing in the future enough to know that even though there's a long way to go, forward is really your only choice. Okay. Now I understand. Um, oh, how cute. So something that you've been working on, something that you've been inventing, something that you have been, um, um, yeah, it's like you had a new brilliant idea. You've almost been inspired. There's a sense of inspiration in you. I don't know why you would decide to, because you usually have such confidence in what you believe, but there is a sense of either somebody in your life or you really needing your faith right now. Do you see all like the kite, the kite, the kite constantly repeating? This is a sense of believe in those dreams, believe in those possibilities. Go ahead, test it. See if it works. Even if you fall, you're going to be able to get back up. Believe in it. Try. Try that something new. There's something new that you have to go to. There's something new that's calling you. This is your direction. It's in the new, not the old. So please don't be sucked back into those old patterns. I know it's weak. I know it's a little unsure. You're like a baby deer. Your legs are a little bit, you know, uh, uh, but it's the way to go. The future is the only way to go. Um, yes, just say, look at this card, man. What? Yes, just say yes. Leo, even if it doesn't make any sense, anything else but your heart, you rule the heart. Believe in it. Believe in it. Believe in yourself. Believing in your heart and what your heart calls you to do is believing in yourself. So Leo, the answer is yes. Take the chance. Say yes. Don't fall back into that BS that you're used to. This is you trying a new thing and taking a new leap of faith, even though it seems crazy. You have got to do it. Your answer is one answer. It's a straight answer and it's yes. Nice. This could also be somebody taking a leap of faith in you. Just saying. Virgo, let's go. Virgo. In a very Virgo inspired move, I am tidying up my cards before I move on. Virgo, here we go. You and your loved ones are safe. Oh my God. Okay, so Virgo, basically what's going to happen to you is what just happened to me. You're going to get, there's going to be a big old relief. Whatever you've been worrying about, and I know you've been worried about a lot because Virgos worry all the time, but there is a sense of at least you know that your family is safe. What has been affecting your family? What has been impacting you guys? Has it been this quarantine? Has it been, are you afraid somebody's cheating on you? Um, are you know you afraid your kid isn't okay? Whatever you've been worried about, this really um, kind of protective Cancerian energy of, what worrying worrying about the family and the home space have you been worrying about your home or your house itself all of those things virgo you're about to get news information or finally 
all that's about to be released. You're able to finally let those worries and concerns go because now you know that everybody is going to be okay. Oh, that's it. If you're dealing with a Cancerian, it's almost like you're, you may be finally able to let them go. Hold on. Receive with love and appreciation. Gracious acceptance is a way to show love. Okay, Virgo, you don't have a hot. Okay, this is seven. So this is opportunity. I honestly feel like this is gifts. Gifts and or money that's coming to you that basically helps out your, fam your family situation. Um, take it. Don't like, don't balk at it. Even if this is something subtle or something small, uh, smile and say thank you because something that you have asked for maybe a long time ago um, is finally coming. You're finally going to get good news or a good word that you can, um, yeah, like, like that things have, are going your way. Yes, yes. Ooh, could be a new, I don't, I don't, there's could be so many possibilities and I don't have specifics right now, but it has to do with your family with knowing your family is gonna be okay. Whether that's the money that's just come in or if you were waiting for test results to come in, whatever it is that's been causing you a great deal of tension, guess what? If you guys have been sick, there's a sense of that clearing up and going away. Everybody in your home is going to be fine. Okay. Um, oh, look at this, because you stood up. I feel like you did some major investigation and major research and you refused to back down when the going got tough and the sky got foggy. And this has to do with fog or smog or whatever. So it could have to do with this fucking quarantine that has affected all of our lungs. There, not, not the quarantine, but the, 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 the virus. This is a sense of standing up to it and it actually being defeated, of it going away. So if quarantine has affected you a great deal or affected your mindset, there is a sense of it being over soon. There is also a sense of you defeating whatever black cloud was hanging over your head. So whatever was bothering you or frustrating you or messing with your family and the serenity of your family. And if you, Virgo, if you have seen the last two Virgo uh, extended. And if you have it, go buy them. Go get them because it's important information. You need to know it. This is a sense of that, you sticking up for yourself, you um, you know, forcing the clouds to go away. You're not accepting the, the gloom. You're not accepting, you're not accepting the, the bullshit that you don't want in your life. You're standing up for, you're, you're standing up to the dark clouds. That's what you're doing. And because of that, they're starting to clear. So you've struggled through this and you're getting through this and there is hope. And definitely not just hope, but there is a cleansing. Everybody's going to be okay. Um, the ever unfolding rose cracked open. It's happening for you, not to you. So there you go. Oh, there is a, there is a, a break in the air. Um, a fragrant sense of roses that maybe you haven't smelt in a long time. Um, I don't know if this just has to do with taking a shower, but there is a sense of, yeah, a break, a freshness, um, a renewal of life, a happiness. Finally, you are finally the breakthrough. Finally, finally. It's like the breakthrough that you've been wanting and, and asking for. So um, it is a gorgeous card, right, Sarah? Um, the ever unfolding rose cracked open. It's happening for you, not to you. So, oh my God, there's just a relief here. Oh, finally, something is moving out of your way. Whatever had impeded your progress or your happiness or your sense of stability is moving the fuck out of the way and the air is clearing. And this could even be like clearing the air, finally getting out what was on your mind, whatever was looming over you, finally being able to confront to clear the air. Virgo. And now we have Libra. Libra. Okay, here we go. Did I do that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. Yep. Libra, it's all on you, baby boo. Here we go. Nothing will come of this situation void, of course. So this is really about releasing and letting go because you've been working on something that isn't going to take off, isn't going to go anywhere. Whatever was happening, and it, 
to be honest with you, it could also be good news. This is a set, like, we'll see what's in the other cards, but it could be good news. If somebody was persecuting you or accusing you or threatening you, it's not going to hold up. It's not substantial. It's void of, like, remember what I said, void of course, Libra, in the beginning? There is a sense of whatever was working against you or whatever is not working for you is done. It's over with. So if you've been putting your energy into the wrong directions, you've got to be the one that stops it. But if there was an energy working against you, the universe is going to clear it out. It's almost like that Scorpio energy is going to suss up all the, it's going to clear it all out. It's all the garbage is being taken out. And this is a clarifying time for you. Um, Libra. Oh, wow. uh, be in the present and dream of the future. When we dream, everything is possible. Grounding your energy is when I say cosmic and divine intervention. So this is timing. Timing is perfect or imperfect, depending on where you're looking at. But there is a sense of something that something that didn't suit, something that didn't fit, something that had to be released is being released now. You're able to let it go. Because um, um, everything is in alignment now. I honestly feel that whatever was working against you, it's not able to stay, it's not able to stick. So it's almost like it's fine, you're finally able to overcome it. You're finally, yeah, you're finally able to let go of it or you're finally able to overcome it. We're going to get more information. Hold on. This is, oh, this is saying goodbye. Yeah. Wow. All of this is about saying goodbye. It's time to say goodbye. It's time to release and relinquish and let go of whatever you were holding on to. This is a fond farewell. You know, maybe um, it's almost like uh, people aren't happy to see you go. But there is a sense of you being ready to go, you having to leave, having to get out of there. Um, I keep feeling feeling release. It could because it. Hold on, let me. You're finally ready to move on. You're finally ready to go. Whatever was holding you back isn't holding you back anymore. It's almost like the chains just got weak. Whatever chains or bars were holding you in just turned into rubber and you can get through them. And you, you're going to get through them. Like nothing can hold you back now. That's what I keep getting. Um, dance with life. This is very Libra energy. Do something to change your energy. Oh my God. Full moon energy. This is you letting your wolf out. This is you letting your wild side out. This is you letting your truth out, right? This is you finally allowing yourself to be free and relinquish all those ties to the past. Do something to change your energy. Uh, and walk away. That's what it's saying. It's walk away. You want to change your life? You've got to allow yourself to step out a new door. You can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again. In order to change your life, you got to change your choices and your life changes with that first change of choice that you make. So there is a sense of what you've been doing in the past hasn't been getting you anywhere. Let it go, relinquish it and walk away from it. Step out into your new future by saying goodbye to the past. Dance with life. Do something to change your energy. Because it's, it's there's stagnation here. There's stagnation. And your way is forward. This is once again future energy. But I want to call on some more cards just to be sure. For Libra, 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 the Scorpio full moon. Please come and understand this energy. This is Cancer energy, King of Cups. Feeling emotionally secure and emotionally ready. Once again, you're ready now. You're ready to move forward. Um, finding stability, even if there's, okay, money coming in, money that was not guaranteed to you, almost a sense of, um, kind of finding a better relationship when it comes to money, right? Finding a way to balance out everything so that you are healthy and you are stable, finding almost, I don't know, it could be a new job or it could be working for yourself, um, finding a way to stabilize yourself and have more confidence in what's coming in. There is a sense of maybe you've been doing something or making money, uh, whatever you've been doing to make money not working out for you or not being 
uh, something that's actually making you happy or feel good. This is you putting your emotional health and psychological health first. Even if it destabilizes your money, your money's gonna come back in. Don't worry about it. You can let go of this energy that you've been holding on to because holding on to this energy is actually prolonging the pain. Letting letting it go or like leaving that position that you're not happy in. You you feel like it's gonna destabilize you, you're worried about it, but simultaneously it's what you have to do to actually stabilize yourself. Do it. Do it and 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 uh be on the side of your emotional health. That's what you have to be on the side of. You have to choose emotional health and emotional stability. Even if it seems like there's a fear of destabilizing yourself financially, believe me, you won't. You'll be doing the best thing you ever did for yourself. And this could be a blessing in disguise as well. Timing is perfect right now to let go of what you've insisted of from yourself um, and open up a door for what, you know, um, for what you're really capable of, right? If you allow all those obligations to like fade away, fade away. It's almost like money is definitely coming in. If that's been holding you back, if, if that makes any sense. Um, I do think this void of course, nothing will come of the situation is that this, if you're in a tight situation now, Libra, it's not going to last long. And if you're in a situation that you've stayed in and you know that it's not right, it's time to, it's, it's, it, it's like everything is lining up for you to get out. This is your way out. It's like all the doors are going to click, 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 unlock, walk through them. This is your escape. Somebody's helping you escape, Libra. Somebody's going to give you an opportunity that's going to help you escape. From the situation that wasn't going anywhere, you got to take it. Get on the train and don't look back. And there we are. We're at the end of our Zodiac. Thank you guys for being with me. Uh, how's everybody doing out there? It's been, a, it's been a long time. I know this is this was a lot shorter than it usually is. So thank God. Um, we got it down to under two hours. So I'm loving it. We got it down to under an hour and a half. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I have most of the timestamps. I got to get that Scorpio timestamp. I hope you Gemini's are getting some sexy time. I hope everybody's getting some sexy time. Scorpio full moons are sexy, sexy time. So I hope everybody's getting themselves some sexy time. Um, I've been actually feeling the pull for a while now. There's been a lot of sensuality boiling up, and I know that it's the approach of this full moon Scorpio. I'm going to do my love spell. I'm going to light me some candles. And... Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see my path forward. What is this? Babysitting my daughter's puppy. Oh, hi, cutie. Hi, so cutie. Hey, Kimberly. Um, um. Oh, I love puppies. They're the best. You know, puppies are those like surefire way to happiness. It's like being around a puppy will just take you, bam, right back to your core of happiness. It's so easy to be happy around a puppy because they remind us. It's just in the simple things. And they're just so cute. Anyway, uh, hey, Kimberly. So, guys, Amber, thanks so much. Uh, Amber and Jackie, thank you so much for all your hard work during these long sessions. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to bounce because there's still some sunlight left. And I got to go take care of my puppy. She's down there crossing her leg. She already probably already peed somewhere. Um, but I do love you guys. And um, I will see you. Uh, no, I will not see you on Monday, but the week ahead will be up. So watch for them. Bye guys.